Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So if you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a ton. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an e-commerce application. So something like a store where you're just selling products. All right, let's get started building this app. So the first thing I'm just going to do is open up the terminal and I'm going to type Rails new and the name of the app just call it like e-commerce rails and then I'll use dash D to set the database to PostgreSQL and dash C to use Tailwind as the CSS framework for our app. And then I'll just press enter to generate the app. By the way, the database and the CSS framework is totally optional. You can do it with a different database or a different framework like bootstrap if you're more comfortable with that. And you can also just write your own CSS. Now that the app has finished generating, we can CD into our app. Wait, now I can't spell e-commerce. <laughs> e-commerce. There we go. So we're getting to the app and then we can just start the server by typing bin slash dev. That's going to start the rail server and the tailwind server. And then now that it's started, we can go and view this in our browser. If we open up the browser and go to localhost colon 3000, we'll be able to load up our app. Now we should see this screen, like because I'm using Postgres, you need to create the database. So we can either do this in the console or just do it right here on the page. So I'm going to click this button, create database. And now that you have done that, we'll see we have the Rails logo, which means everything's set up for our app so we can start like coding on it. So what we're going to need for this app is like a product model. A product could have a price and maybe like a few different attributes, like a description. We could have images too. So let's just go ahead and add that right now. So I'm going to stop the server. Then I'm going to type Rails G scaffold product. And a product is going to have a name. Let's do a description, which will be type rich text. Rich text is like an like a advanced text editor. Well, not that advanced, but more than just like a basic text field. So it allows you to do stuff like bold, add images, all the stuff that your users might want to do for their product. So I'm just going to use rich text. Now let's give it images, which would be type attachments. So that's going to be using active storage to store the files like into our app. And then also a product might have price, which can be type decimal, just in case you want to include like the cents on the price. And I don't know if there's really much else for now. Let's just leave it like this for now. I know we might do like quantity and like size and all that stuff, but that would probably be a different model. So let's just start off with this product. I'm going to press enter. We're going to scaffold the product and then we can migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. All right, just like that, we created the product model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the server. And one cool thing about that scaffold is it also created all of the views. So if we went in the browser to slash products URL. You'll see that we have this whole page set up already, which is going to display the products and it allows us to create a new product. So when I go to create a new product, oh, I'm getting error. Uh, the action text does not exist. So that's because in Rails, when you're using action text and active storage, we need to run an installer in the console. So I'm going to run Rails action text called install. This is going to set up everything for action text and active storage. As you see, there's two migrations, one for active storage and one for action text. And then we can migrate the database one more time with Rails DB migrate. All right, perfect. So now that we have migrated that, we should have action text set up. We can restart the server and then reload this page. Let's go reload. All right, and everything looks really good. So. Action text came in, like all of the features are working. You'll see that it has all these different buttons that you can click, like if you want to add code, if you want to do a list. So let's just go ahead and create our first product. 
I think what I want to do is I'm just going to look up like another e-commerce. I mean, let's look up like t-shirts, find another site, and then just use that to help me have some test data. So cool. Let's do this shirt. Put the name and the description it might be like right here for images. I can just save these images to my computer. I'll grab this one too, why not? Now we have a bunch of images that we can drop in. The, the default file fields, we are expecting like multiple. So we can just like select as long as you drag and select, I think I might even have to change the ordering. That's not helping. Yeah, it's funny because I have some other stuff that I don't want to add. Like, let's see, see if I can just delete that. All right. And then we're going to drag, select these items and then press open. And then you'll see that it has four files selected in the image selector. Okay. And I'm also going to set the price. I want to see what their price was. Oh, $31. Also, one thing they have is like the original price and then the current price. So they can show like it used to be this much and it kind of makes your people think like, whoa, it's on sale. So we could handle something like that too if we wanted to. But let's just create our first product and see how this looks. Boom, I created the product. Now this is what your show page would look like. Default. So it's pretty ugly it's just like listing all of the attributes that we have but anyways this is a pretty cool like it's pretty cool what you can do with rails without doing any coding yet basically we've only done the scaffold so like a simple command in the console we haven't had to edit any of this but what i'm going to do is i'm going to totally change up the style and make this a lot better so what we can do is open up the code in your favorite code editor to do that for me, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I can just type code dot in the terminal because I have that all installed so that it works. And then boom, it opens our Rails app in my code editor. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to config red star B and I'm gonna set a root for the application. So to do that, I'm just gonna uncomment this bottom piece that has the root code and I'm gonna change it from post products index and then what that means is we don't have to go to slash products to see this page anymore. It'll actually just be the main page on our site. So we go to our local host and in production, this would be like your URL and you'd see this page. That's pretty cool. And I think I'll probably start uh, with editing this products page. So what I'll do is I'll go into the app views products and then the index and I can start working on improving this styling. So you'll notice that this div with the ID products, this is where all of our products are getting rendered. And it's just rendering a product, which is the partial. Over here, we have an underscore product partial that has like all of the information for our product. But it's styled like really ugly. It's just basically printing it out. Uh, and that's fine. I think I'll leave that on the index. Let's render the product. And then we can think about like how we want to style it. I think I want to delete this link to show the product and I'll just turn the partial into the card that we use on the index page. But one funny thing is on the show page, it's also using the same partial, but I think I won't use it there. I think I'll just like do my own styling if that makes sense. So let's start off with styling this main page. Like what do we probably want to do on this page? Well, for one, we might want to have a custom background color or image. So to do that, I usually just do it on the body. So in the layouts folder in the views, there's an application.html that you're B. This file is the layout that all of your pages in your app get rendered through. So your, your content of your page would get put where this yield is. And you'll see that there's like a class around it. There's a main element with this class that's adding some styling. So also if we wanted to totally get rid of this, we could style the app better, but it's just gonna look a little bit weird. Like when we reload, now there's no padding. So we'd have to add that by hand. It depends like if you wanna 
delete it from here and then just add it inside of the pages but you'd have to do it on every page which can be kind of annoying so i might just leave it for now unless i need to do some more advanced custom styling and then we can just go right on the body and add a class and then let's just do like a bg indigo 500 and see how that looks boom now we have this whole like purple kind of site if we wanted to do a gradient in tailwind you can do something like bg gradient to bottom and then do a from color to maybe like a lighter color so then it would casually get lighter although it's weird how there it looks like there's kind of like a glitch where the bottom is it's the old color for some reason hmm. let's try bg gradient to the right Oh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, that looks actually kind of cool. It's like dark over here, light over here. It's interesting. We could also do a via, which is like a middle color. Maybe like a light purple. I mean, that's cool. <clears throat> it's kind of a lot, but also it's kind of cool. And then for that products, uh, text we might want to edit that so if we go back to the products index page we actually have this content for title so that's what's i guess in our app that's setting that should be setting the, the url the content for title but it doesn't look to be like it's working because it still says the regular name up there which is kind of funny but if we look at the application file we'd be able to tell like where that's supposed to happen. And you'll notice that it's not working because this is the title. We're always setting it to e-commerce rails. So it's kind of funny that they added this in the scaffold, but not in the layout. But if we did want it to work, what we could do is say content for, or wait, is it content for, or no, it's yields. So we'd say yields. Yield title. And we just do or e-commerce rails so if there's no title in the content for then we're just going to use the default so this would this is what would make that title update work and if we reload we'll notice our title is actually products it's kind of funny Perfect. it's just called best products and you'll see it's totally working up there but for this title it's different so that's on the h1 we just have like this simple products Text. So if I want to use the same text, I can just copy it's there, the best products. Cool. And that's cool. I think what we'll do is let's just get rid of new product because we wouldn't want people seeing that on the site anyways. Just a link to new products. And we can add that back later in some sort of like admin view or something. And I'm also just going to get rid of this div with this flex justify between because that was just the style the title and the button to be side by side. But I actually just want the title to be in the center. So I'm gonna add text center, reload. And now we have this title in the center of the page. It says the best products. All right, so what I can do to actually test out this font is I'm gonna copy the text from our website, bring it over to the font, put it inside of the preview. And then we're able to look at how the fonts would look like for our app so depending on what type of e-commerce product you're using you might want to have a different style like i know some like brands some clothing brands might want to have like this gothic kind of dark style that's what was popular at least a few years ago stuff like this um but i don't really know what we want for our app so i'll probably just choose something chill What do I want to use? See, this can be a tricky part. This could actually, you could spend a lot of time just trying to figure out what font to have on your app. But I really don't want to make it a big thing. So good to just be able to choose one and then you can change it later. How about this like broken one? This one looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna download that. You have to unzip it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it into our code. So we can come back into our app. And we're going to put it inside of the public folder 
because that's just a lot easier to work with like tailwinds in my experience i've had to put it in the public folder so i'm going to go to the public folder create a new folder called fonts and then i'll drag in that font over to the fonts folder so now we have this font called broken.otf and to configure that we're going to go to the app assets style sheets and let's go to the application.tailwind.css or application.css we could actually do it in both so let's do an application.css and we can leave the tailwind css for any like tailwind styling that we need to do and inside of here i'm going to add at font face i'm going to set the font family oh wait actually i remember from another app to get it to work so that i can use it inside of tailwind you actually want to put it inside of application.tailwind.css and the way that you do it is just like they're doing here with the at layer. So maybe like at layer components. And then we put our font face, which let's just call it broken. And then the source is going to be uh, slash font slash broken dot OTF. Because once your app is hosted, this will just be off of the main like location and the fonts folder would show up because everything in public gets put in like the gets put in the URL. So like all these files, you can actually access them with their URL is their file name. So that's what we're doing for the font. And then since we're inside of the layer components, we can create a custom class or we could do that inside of the Tailwind config. So let me try to do it from the Tailwind config. Let's go over to config, Tailwind config.js. And then we have the Steam Extend font family. If we want to add our own font into Tailwind, we can do it here. So let's do like broken. Then the, the name that we had is broken. So you use the font family name, not the file name. So just broken. And then we can add like a fallback just in case they weren't able to load that font. All right. And then to test this out, we go back to our index page and add font broken this is our new custom font and then reload our app and just like that it worked so it looks like everything's working now it's a little bit smaller so we're going to want to increase that text size boom the best products and we can also make it like a better color just going to go 100 it's going to be really light now whoa yeah it's kind of too light i want something that like sticks out of the page but i don't want to get too caught up on the ui yet all right so now i want to style like these so this product should be like probably just like a card with the image and then the name and like the price and everything so to do that i'm going to style this products tab right here so first of all, it's doing this min width full. So it's trying to take up the full width already, which can be kind of interesting, but we might want to make it take up less space. So to really determine how much space this element's taking, you can put a background color, reload, and you'll see like actually how much space that element's taking, which is all the way from this side to that side, which that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a grid class because I want to separate the products into different cards. So let's do a grid, grid calls four, and like a gap eight. Reload. We still can't really determine like much about this because we need to style this products partial. But if we were to create another product real quick, I'm not even going to really like spend too much time finding one. Just copy that. I guess I am spending time doing it already. <laughs> hey, I'm not in a rush, honestly. But that shirt's kind of cool, actually. Whoa. But I don't like the title, like the daily paper. I mean, I guess that's cool. I like paper, but paper's kind of bad for the environment. If you think about it. All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to drag and drop those images. Or I can just click on the images and do it here. I think it was the palm arrow. 
It's also the ones down here. Whoops. Okay. This is do three of them then. And the price looks like it's 34. All right. Let's create product. Boom. Now we have two products. Let's go back to products. And now this is what it's kind of looking like with that grade column. So it's putting them side by side and it would do this like up to four elements and then we wrap. So from here, I just want to style this product so that it looks a little bit nicer. So to do that, I can go in the products folder to underscore product .html .erb. And really right here, we could basically just delete all of the content and redo it. There's really not that much stuff there. So the first thing is going to be image tag or the product.images.first. If we reload, now we'd actually display the image. And on there, I can add a class, give it like a fixed width and height. And I'm going to use object cover to make the image fit inside of that like size. Now you can't really see the object too much, so I might want to make it a little bit bigger. And also with the with the grid calls, I usually just do with full. I'm gonna try to take up its full width. Okay, that looks cool. And then we can do height like a little bit larger. Let's try 64. Still a little bit too small, so maybe like 80. Alright, I mean that's fine, although you really can't see this guy. That's <laughs> You can see the shirt though, kind of. So that's all that we really care. And I might even add like a rounded large class onto the image. Ooh, now you have this nice cute rounded in this on this image that looks cool. And we could simply print like the title and the price underneath. So to do that, I'm gonna add like a simple P tag just to separate the elements and then I'll print product.name. Boom, so now we have the name just like that. And we can just go right under here, do another p tag. I'm going to use number to currency, which is a helper in Rails, and then I'll pass in the product.price. Should display that as a price. So, yeah, already we have a lot better like setup for our app. And then obviously we can style these to stick out a little bit more. It's like the product name. I want to do text large. And give it some sort of color. And the same thing for the price. So yeah, I mean, that's cool. I'm going to use gray instead of indigo. Let's see how that looks. All right. And then what I would want is when you click on one of these products, it would just bring you to that product show page. So to do that, we can just wrap this whole div inside of a link, link to X do, and then just indent that and add an end. And boom, just like that, you've wrapped that element inside of a link to, which means you can click on this. And if you wanted the styling on like, the image, for example, to change when you hover, we can add a hover state onto the image tag. So we can do a hover brightness 75. So it's going to make it a little bit darker. You'll see what that looks like. So it kind of gives you that hover effect that you might expect. See, and if we also, it's kind of like abrupt. So if we wanted to transition it in, we can make it a little bit smoother by doing transition all duration 250 and now you'll see like it kind of is a little bit smoother right, so i'm gonna click on a shirt and boom this is what it looks like oh it actually you know it actually looks pretty good um like this so i was thinking i wouldn't i would get rid of the partial from the show page but it actually doesn't look too bad so we <laughs> Although I guess like the image could be bigger, but still we already have this simple site just with like a few changes to the app this is pretty awesome. All right. So another thing I realized is this isn't really just a t-shirt store. It's like all sorts of products because it's e-commerce. 
So it might be nice to add something like a category where we have different categories for the products. And then you could choose like, <clears throat> you know, different products have different categories. But this also leads me to the next point where I feel like we need some area for the owner of the site to be able to like configure stuff like categories, add new products. So we almost just need an admin dashboard. So that's what I want to get into doing right now. So to add like user accounts and admin and all that stuff, I'm going to use the device gem. So that's a gem that already has a lot of those like features already built and we can just use it in the gem. So to add the device gem, we can just do a bundle add device command. This will add the device gem. And now we can do rails g device colon install. Also, I created a custom gem to make the sign in pages pretty because one of the steps here is to do rails g device views. But if we add the bundle, we do bundle add the tailwind underscore device. We can get my gem that I created and we can use that installer instead. So if we type Rails G Tailwind device colon install, it'll set up the views. Oh wait, not Tailwind device install, Tailwind device colon views. Yep. And they even said like, did you mean it? Yeah, I meant this. So now we have the views. The next thing to do is to create the actual admin model. I'm gonna do that by typing Rails G device admin, just like that. We'll do that and then we can migrate the database with rails db migrate and start the server with bin slash dev so what this means is we now have an admin model in our app and it's using device so we're able to sign into it so if you go to slash admin slash sign in or maybe it's admins slash sign in. yep see we can log in as an admin and we can also create a new account. So we don't want users to be able to create admin account. Like we don't want to have an admin sign up page because you know, that's not how it works. So for an admin account, we'd probably want to just create it from the rails console. And then there wouldn't be a way to sign up as an admin. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We'll just open up the code and head over to that model. So in the app folder models, we have this new admin.rb model. And inside of here, we have the admin class and we have this device section right here where we're setting like a few different methods that configure device for this certain model. So one of them is called registerable and that is giving the access to sign up or create new accounts. So if we just delete that as an option, now admin accounts are not registerable. So there's no create an account link. So that's kind of like a nice little feature of device. So what I'm gonna do is I'll create the admin account from the back end. So I'll come in here, go to Rails C to go to the Rails console. And then I'm gonna type admin.create and we're just gonna need an email. So how about we just do admin at site.com. The password is going to be <clears throat> admin123. <laughs> hey, it's pretty simple, but shh, keep it on the low. And obviously, don't do this. You guys should do your own email, your own password for your admin. All right, so now we have an admin account and I can actually go and sign in right here, admin at site.com, put in that secure password and boom, just like that, we have signed in as an admin. We even get a nice pretty message. So what happens when you sign in as an admin? You should be able to go to slash admin. That's the route that I think I'm gonna use. And it would have a whole admin dashboard where you could like create new products and stuff like categories and all that stuff. And also like view sales, you know, we can think about all that stuff. So to do this, I'm going to go back into the code, go over to the routes.rb, the same file where we're configuring routes and I'm going to set up a new route. So I'm going to do one called resource. So note that I'm not doing resources. I'm doing singular because I just want like a singular controller. And then I want to have only the show action. 
I'm also going to set the controller like, explicitly right here in the routes because it will, by default, it'll look for a plural admins controller. And we don't want it to do that. We just want to look for an admin controller with a show action. And that's what we're going to use for our dashboard. So now we're going to have to create that controller in the app folder controllers, create a new file called admin controller.rb. We could do the class admin controller inherits from application controller. And then we just do a simple show action, which won't really have anything yet. And then the thing that will lock this down to make sure that nobody else can view the admin dashboard except for admins is this before action. Authenticate admin. Okay, I don't think I spelled that right. <laughs> there we go. Authenticate admin. So that's a method that device gives you for whatever your model is called. So in our case, we have an admin model, so we can authenticate the admin. You won't be able to view this unless you're an admin. Now let's also do the corresponding view. So over in the views folder, we're going to create a folder called admin and then a show.html.erb template. So this file, and here's where we show like the admin dashboard. So I'm just going to simply do h1 say like welcome to admin mode or something that's reload boom welcome to admin mode and I, I am an admin so that's why i can see it if we want to test the security go to a new incognito window try to go to admin and boom it, it just says like sign in although honestly maybe we don't even want to show them like the sign in page because that's kind of too much information right i would rather just redirect them to like the main page and not even tell them anything. Just be like, whoops, no URL like that. So to do that, instead of using authenticate admin, let's do our own method. So it'll just be like check admin privileges or something. <laughs> check admin priv. And I'm going to go down to private section. I'm going to create this method. You can call it whatever you want. And I'll just say if, uh, well, yeah, if not current admin, so that's another method you get, which will check if like the model signed in. So if not, just redirect them over to the root path and don't even tell them anything. And now, so the admin still works for a regular guy or for, I mean, for me as an admin, <laughs> but if I was a regular dude incognito, if I was like a hacker trying to go to the admin mode, boom, nothing happens. It just redirects them to the main site and they're probably like, oh, there's no admin mode here, whatever. So that's just what we want to have happen. Now for the admin, inside of your admin mode, we could start adding in all of those cool little features. Well, basically just start off with a link to new product. Oh, it looks like I forgot a bracket here. So that's why the styling was weird. New product, that's going to go to new products path. We can do a little bit of styling, just a little bit. I think that should be interesting. Let's reload. Oh, it says no, no method, new products. Oh, I meant new product. So singular to reload. All right, cool. We have our button. I probably want to put that like underneath the text though. So to do that, let's just have a div. I'll add a class grid or actually I'll do flex gap four. And then we can just put any of like our action buttons that we want to have inside of this div if we want. Let's also do a margin top six. So it kind of pushes itself away from the text, but we still have this. Oh, because, because like that container class is doing flex, it'll automatically try to like position elements side by side, unless we have a div that wraps the whole thing. It's kind of annoying, but let's just add it outside div. And boom, now our code is working. So I can do a new product. This will bring me to the products page where I can create the product. And right away, I'm really annoyed at like the, the coloring. So I either want to add a background behind this real quick or change the styling of the fields themselves. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the products new page. And I guess let's just add a background for now, like a BG gray 500. Okay, so that's what that looks like. <laughs> we want to add padding maybe. Still looks kind of gross, but we could do a BG gray 200 and we could also do a little bit of transparency. 
All right, yeah, I'm cool with that, honestly. Although, I don't like how the rich text is different than the fields. So, let's go to the form, the underscore form file, to try to fix this. See what's happening. Because all of these should have the same styling, if you look. They all literally have the same styling, but for some reason the text fields have a different color. So I'm going to try to do like BG transparent. There we go, and now they're all transparent at least. Kind of matches like the styling. Or we could do BG create 100. It's kind of what it already is. And I could set it also on the description and the images. So like right here, this one and this one, BG create 100. Now they should all have a light background. Okay, cool. This actually kind of fixes my issue with the UI. All right, cool, back to products. Now, another thing we can handle is on the actual product page, we have like all these links, which we don't want. We might as well just delete them and then we could have something else for admin later. So to do that, let's go to the product show page and all of these links are happening down here at the bottom. So we could either remove this or actually, we could just do a check if current admin then show these links and they could just always be like at the very bottom. And this, this condition right here is what's hiding the links but it's still not really secure. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to new incognito window, this is what somebody who doesn't have admin privileges would see. Just a shirt, right? <laughs> it's funny because this is also a link that goes to itself. It's kind of like an infinite link to itself. It's pretty silly. But here's where the hacking comes in. If I was to go to the URL and just type it slash edit, boom, I'm inside of the code, I'm hacking. I could say like, ha <laughs> ha get wrecked or what, like whatever a hacker would say right update the product oh now it actually caused another error because the image tag all the images got deleted when you updated it because of the way i guess rails works there's no longer images on that product which throws an error because of the partial we might want to quickly address that by going to the partial and adding a condition here so if product.images.any that would prevent any possible errors but still like this guy just hacked your website right so how do you prevent that how do you prevent your site from being hacked you already had the admin which is supposed to hide the buttons but the guy can still change the url so that's just called simple authorization the same way we locked down the admin so that when they went to admin it just redirected them back and it was like no way dude you're not going to admin we have to add that same thing to the products controller and onto a few specific actions. <clears throat> so what we could actually do is we could take our check admin priv and we can move this into like a shared method between the controllers. So there's a few ways to do that. You can do like a class that you include, but I feel like that's more work because all these controllers already inherit from application controller. Why don't we just define it in the application controller and then we could share it. And that's where a, a keyword comes in, protected. So you see me use private a lot. Private is where you hide the method from outside of the controller. So like nobody outside of the controller could call that method except for inside. Protected means basically the same thing except for the only else case is inheritance. So when one controller inherits from another, it still gets the method. So protected is actually perfect for this scenario. We can put our check admin proof inside of protected, and then we could also use that wherever we need to. So right here in admin controller, we'll have that before action. I'm just gonna copy this, go over to products controller, and I'll place it up at the top, but we wanna do it only for certain um, methods because obviously the index, all the products, that's fine. Everybody can see that. The show also, everybody should see that. Everything else should probably get locked down, like destroying, update, create, new, all of that. So actually what we can do is we can say accept. And then we can pass in an array and just put the method name. So like accept index, accept show. If it's these two actions, then don't check add and prove. Otherwise, definitely do it so nobody can hack. So let's see what that looks like. If I go back to my admin mode and I reload, this is what it looks like. If I want to edit the product, I'm perfectly able to edit. Let me add some more images back here. 
update the product. Cool, so I was able to update that product. Now let's go into the incognito session and see if my guy can still hack. So like, look, my text is still there. Let's say, let's go back to the other one. As an admin, I saw this and I was like, okay, no way, I'm gonna cancel this. But also I have to set more images because the way that the Rails app, we're gonna address this also next. We're going to make that image select better. Anyways, I fixed the name, right? Now, if that hacker wanted to hack it again, right? He goes to the same URL slash edit. Now he's not able to do that. If he tries to go to products new, you're not able to do it unless you're admin. So perfect. We've locked down those important URLs in our app. We made it a lot more secure. From here, we can get on to designing the site better. So first of all, product show page, I want to completely change up, make it better. So let's go to the product show template. I'm just not going to render product because I'm using that partial already on the index page. And I don't want to show like all of that because it's literally just a link going to this show page. It doesn't make sense. Instead, we can do our own kind of styling. So what I was thinking is uh, like a usual style that I see is images on the left, content, like the title, description, price on the right. So let's do something like that. We can add a div class grid, grid calls two, which means there's going to be two columns side by side with exactly the same width. That's what's cool about grid. And then inside of there, let's just put our first div for the images and our second div for all the content. All right. And in the first div, let's just take product.images.first. Maybe we'll make like the first image really big. So we can say with full i80 object cover. So it's like the same as on that on the index. So that might not even be that big. It looks like I got an error. Syntax error. Oh right. I'm just like I forgot the image tag. <laughs> image tag product images first. There we go. Reload. All right, this is what it's looking like. Also, I was expecting it to be farther on the side, so I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, look, this top layer. First of all, we have an MX Auto inside of an MX Auto with with two thirds. So let's just get rid of all those divs real quick. Actually, we still need. Remember, because the flexing, we still need one div. And let's get rid of the styling on here. Let's only do width four. Reload. All right, this is what it's looking like now. So obviously this is this is not working for the image. Maybe if I'll do this div that's wrapping the images. We can give that a max width medium with full MX auto. So it'll automatically center itself and it'll be like a little bit smaller. That looks fine, but I still want the image to be a little bit bigger. So let's switch from 80 to 96. Which is just like a tailwind styling. Uh, and I guess that's fine. Now underneath it, I'm going to add a div. Probably going to do grid calls. So grid, a grid layout, grid calls, either two or three. And then we can get the rest of the images. So what I'll do is I'll loop through <clears throat> product images. I want to get everyone after the first one. So we can do that by doing the first index dot dot inside of array syntax, then loop over image, get ourselves an image tag, the image class with full height 10 object cover. I don't know how this is gonna look. Let's just check it out. All right, so like they would get squished underneath. Okay, that's way too small of a height. Let's do height 20. Also, I want to like kind of separate it from the top image. Let's do some margin top on this div. Boom, now it's a little bit of space. Also, we need gap in between the columns. So let's do gap four. And boom, we have something that looks like this. All right, maybe a little bit larger height, like height 32 might look good. All right, yeah, that's cool. So you have the images here on the left. Now on the right, I'm going to put in so in this other div i'm going to put in like the title 
for starters. So we might as well just put that in H1. We can make this like pretty big. We can also give it that font from the main page. So I think it's called like broken. Let's give it a cool color. And lastly, we'll display that product.name. Reload. All right, so that's cool. Awesome t-shirt. And then underneath we might have the description. So we can just render that description probably inside of a div. We'll print the product dot description. Reload. Boom, you'll see we have this description. Also, like it's kind of taking up too much space. So it looks a little bit off-centered. So I can add a fixed height or no fixed width on that div. And I'll just do a max width small. See what that looks like. All right, now it's kind of more like in the right place. And then I might want to color it too to make it a little bit prettier. So we can do text gray 100. Oh, and maybe I'll give it a background color, like a BG gray 700, rounded large. Oh, and I'll add opacity on the gray. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and padding, of course. But whoops. So that's what that would look like. Uh, it doesn't really look right. Maybe I just wanted padding X for, cause it looks like there's already a little bit of padding for some reason, like there's an empty line. I don't know if it's the same for the other one. No, the other one doesn't have the empty line. So I must've done that in the code. Also, this one's like taking up, now this title is taking up a little bit too much space. So, how about we put the max width on the top level so that it affects both the title or the name of the product and the description. That's probably a better idea. So up here, we can do a max width. Let's do medium. See how that looks. Mm, it's a little bit, I feel like we give them more space, like max width large. Max width Excel. So I think the text wrap might be affecting it. Something like break words, you can actually have it not care about it. I think that's fine also. But I don't know if I like this uh, background on that description. So I might get rid of the padding. We'll get rid of most of this. And we can rethink the design in a second. Like, How do we want this description to be laid out? I'll do, I don't, I don't know if I want light text or dark text because the background of the website is like pretty light. I think I like dark text. Wait, oversized. Okay, this actually looks a little bit better. And then I put the price underneath. So right underneath description, let's just do like another, I'll just do a span. Put the at product dot price, and let's use a number to currency helper to turn that into like a money value. We could put some styling on that too. Maybe want to turn it into a button, or not a button, but like a badge. BG green five hundred to rounded large. Text green fifty. And you'll see what I meant by a badge, like a, one of these guys, a little badge. It looks like it's kind of getting in the way of the description. So I want to add some margin. Or actually, we could just add a break, a BR tag. Boom, now we have a little bit of space and this is starting to look better. Now these bottom links, obviously this only shows on admin, but we could still make that look a little bit less ugly by centering it at least. <laughs> so let's have a div inside of here and just do MX auto on it which should center itself. Oh, let's see. No, it, okay, it didn't do anything. Instead of MX Auto, let's do uh, with full flex justify center. There we go, now it's centering it, but uh, we can do item center to make this stop being weird like that. <laughs> that one's a little bit too puffy. Oh, it still looks kind of weird. Oh, I bet there's like a margin bottom somewhere. Yeah, look, there's like a margin top, so we have to get rid of that. And 
margin left. So let's get rid of that too. And then we can add our own space if we want. So yeah, it looks like these are going to need some space. Oh, there's also this one right here. Destroy this product. It had like some weird styling. So I'm just delete that. And we can add our own styling. So on this top level div, let's do like a margin top 16 and then gap four to actually put some space between the buttons. And just like that, this looks a little bit less ugly, I guess. And remember that this is only showing for admin. So not everybody would see this. And obviously they can destroy the product if they want. Boom, product destroyed. They can edit the product. And yeah, but for the regular user, they won't even see this back to products link either. We probably want to add like a nice little thing up here. That's what I usually see is like a nice little, they call it a breadcrumb. That's what developers call it. So on the show page, we can go basically right on top of the image, I guess, or we could go right on top of the grid. Hmm. Let's go on top of the grid. That seems like more logical. So up here, I'm going to do a div. Inside of the div, I'm going to have like a P. <laughs> We're just going to say products. And then we can do, oh yeah, this is actually be a link to. Link to products. So go to the products path. And we could give some styling like text Excel. I'll see what that looks like. Okay, so actually, oh, it does get kind of put all the way over here because of the max width. I kind of want it to go like right on top of the images so it looks kind of nice. Hmm. So maybe I will move it inside, but then if I move it inside, it'll mess with like the styling ratio to the image and the title. So I'd rather have it on the top. Hmm. It's just going to be kind of tricky to get the styling right. You try though, like, let's give it a max width 5XL with full MX auto. See what that looks like. I see it's like, oh, it's a little bit too, too small, too skinny. Let's change it to 6XL. Oh, see, there's still a little bit too much space. Do 7XL. Right, that's fine, but then we're going to need padding. <laughs> so we can do PX8. Oh, we're almost there. Let's try PX10. Should be perfect. Yep, perfect. At least kind of, at least the best that we can do. And then also I want to do margin bottom too. Push the bottom section down a little bit. And I think I want to make this, like the products link, a little bit lighter. So to say like products. Yeah, you know what? That looks pretty good to me. Whoopsies. And then we're going to go over to here. We're going to add another link. And inside of here, we'll just say like, I'll do this bracket and then I'll put the product name. So I actually have to use this syntax like here. And I'll say at product.name. Yeah, and this looks pretty good. See, so you can have products and you have the current one that you're on. And obviously this would just go to the product that you're on. Well, you're already on, so it doesn't really make sense. And then we might want to have a hover state because you can't really tell like this is a link right off the bat. So a lot of times to do that, we can just have a hover state. We can do like a hover text grade 200. So the text will get a little bit darker when you hover on it. And it'll tell you that you can click products yeah i think this looks pretty good all right so really from here there's a few different things that we can do but to start off we could have like a buy now button and then add to cart that's one thing i wanted to cover was the cart i feel like that's a huge thing when you're building an app so having a nice cart would be nice and also a buy now button would also be cool Ooh.